Have you ever pondered what could possibly incite a nation to rally and protest, altering the course of its history? Picture this, Istanbul, 1933, a Belgian manager and a Turkish officer. In the heart of Istanbul, the French railway company, Wagon Lee, known for its sleeping and dining wagons, was about to become the epicenter of a national controversy. The Belgian manager, Giannone, was at the helm steering the company's operations. In his ranks was a Turkish-speaking officer, Nazi Bey, diligently fulfilling his duties. On a seemingly ordinary day, the 22nd of February 1933, the course of their professional relationship took an unexpected turn. Giannone made a bold decision, one that would ripple out, shaking the very foundation of the company and beyond. He informed Nazi Bay that the official language of the company was French, a declaration that was not merely symbolic, but came with tangible consequences. Nazi Bay, for his inability or unwillingness to adhere to this new language policy, was fined 25 kurus and 15 cents. More than just a monetary penalty, he was also suspended from work for a day. A seemingly small incident, a mere blip in the daily operations of a railway company, yet it was a spark that would ignite a fire of controversy. News of this incident soon found its way to the newspapers, causing a stir among the citizens of Istanbul. The imposition of French as the official language, the fines, the suspensions, all these actions were perceived as a direct affront to the Turkish-speaking employees and by extension to the Turkish people. The Vagan Lee Company, under Giannone's management, had unknowingly fanned the flames of a brewing national sentiment. The Turkish-speaking community felt marginalized, their language and identity seemingly dismissed with a wave of managerial decree. The stage was set, the actors in their places, and the script, though unwritten, was about to unfold in a series of dramatic events. An incident that might seem inconsequential was about to light the fuse of a national outcry. A spark can kindle a blaze, and so it was with the Vagon Lee incident. Quiet whispers of discontent soon gave way to loud cries of protest. The incident, seemingly insignificant, had been reported in the newspapers on the 25th of February 1933. This public revelation ignited a fury within the Turkish people. Unwilling to accept this imposed language barrier, the public took to the streets with their indignation. At the heart of this tumult were the students of Darul Funun, the preeminent university of the time and the National Turkish Student Union. These young minds, brimming with nationalistic fervor, organized protests in front of the Vagon Lee Company's office in Beyoglu. Among them were notable figures like Payami Safa, a renowned author, and Kahit Arf, a respected mathematician. Their presence lent credence to the student-led demonstrations, influencing the public sentiment further. The protests soon escalated into a full-blown uprising. The students, filled with a righteous anger, stormed the office, breaking windows and causing chaos. Amidst the destruction, they took down the picture of Mustafa Kemal, the founder of the Turkish Republic, that had been hanging on the wall, a symbolic act demonstrating their rejection of the company's policies. Their fervor did not end there. The group, armed with Turkish flags and the picture of Mustafa Kemal, marched to the company's Karakoy office. Once there, they repeated their earlier actions, leaving the office in disarray, but not before taking down another picture of Kemal from the wall. The final destination for this impassioned crowd was the Istanbul governorship. They continued their demonstration in front of the newspaper buildings, their voices loud and clear, demanding their rights. The protest ended with the crowd delivering the pictures of Mustafa Kemal to the community center, a symbolic act of reclaiming their national identity. The public had spoken, their voices echoing through the streets, but the story was far from over. The ripples of discontent grew into waves of action. As the news of Nazi Bay's punishment spread in the newspapers, the unrest burgeoned. Students of Darul Funun and the National Turkish Student Union, including influential figures like Payami Safa and Kahit Af, began to demonstrate in front of the Wagon Lee office in Beyoglu. The protests were not confined to peaceful picketing. The students, their fervor unabated, escalated their actions and stormed the office. 
The windows shattered under the force of their indignation, the shards echoing the splintering patience of the Turkish people. Inside, they found a picture of Mustafa Kemal hanging on the wall. This image, a symbol of their national pride, was in an office where their language was being devalued. The sight kindled an even fiercer fire in their hearts. They removed the picture of Kemal from the wall, a symbolic gesture, a reclaiming of their national identity. But the storm did not abate there. The wave of resistance moved to the company's Karakoy office. Again, they entered, removed the picture of Kemal, and let their frustration manifest in a whirlwind of destruction. The offices of the Vagon Lee Company, once bustling with activity, now lay in shambles, a testament to the strength of a people standing up for their rights. The crowd then moved to the Istanbul governorship, their voices echoing through the city's streets. They continued their demonstration in front of newspaper buildings, their message resounding loud and clear. They dispersed only after delivering the pictures of Kemal, their symbol of national pride, to the community centre. What started as a ripple of discontent had grown into a tidal wave of action. The Vagon Lee offices, once symbols of foreign imposition, were now ruins, silent witnesses to the power of public sentiment. The people had spoken, their voices echoing through the shattered glass and toppled furniture. The company's offices lay in ruins, a testament to the power of public sentiment. In the aftermath of the turmoil, change was inevitable. The echoes of the protest chants had barely faded when the French railway company, Vagon Lee, took the first step towards conciliation. It rehired the Turkish-speaking officer, Mr. Nasi, whose unjust treatment had sparked the public outrage. This action was a significant shift, a sign of the company's willingness to acknowledge and respect the cultural identity of its workforce. But the impact of the Vagan Lee incident was not confined to the railway company's office. It rippled out, reaching the bustling streets of Pera, a district known for its dense population of minorities and non-Muslims. Here, many foreign companies, jolted by the Vagan Lee incident, began changing their names to Turkish. This was more than a mere cosmetic alteration. It was a recognition of the changing tide, a nod to the growing assertiveness of the Turkish-speaking majority. At the same time, a movement was taking root. The call was simple yet powerful. Citizen, speak Turkish. This campaign, born out of the Vagon Lee incident, was a rallying cry for cultural unity and national identity. It urged the citizens of Turkey, irrespective of their ethnic or linguistic background, to embrace the Turkish language as a symbol of their shared heritage and communal bond. In this tumultuous period, Vagan Lee, once a symbol of foreign dominance, was gradually being assimilated into the Turkish landscape. Its transformation was emblematic of a broader trend. The nationalization of many foreign companies that had been operating since the Ottoman Empire period. The aftermath of the Vagon Lee incident was a time of significant change and transition. It marked the beginning of a new era, one where the Turkish language and culture were given their rightful place, not just in the workplace, but in all spheres of public life. The wheels of change were set in motion, but the final destination was yet to be reached. The echoes of the Vagan Lee incident still resonate in the corridors of history. This monumental event, sparked by a simple language dispute, would come to have profound implications not just for the Vagan Lee Company, but for the very fabric of Turkish society. The aftershocks of the incident rippled through the decades, leaving an indelible mark on the nation's cultural, linguistic and economic landscape. In the immediate aftermath, the incident galvanized a wave of nationalistic sentiment. The chant of Citizens Speak Turkish became a rallying cry, echoing through the streets and alleys of Pera, a district densely populated by minorities and non-Muslims. This campaign was a powerful manifestation of a collective identity, a call to arms for Turkish citizens to assert their linguistic and cultural sovereignty. But the impact of the Vagan Lee incident didn't stop at language and culture. It triggered a sea change in the economic realm as well. The Vagon Lee Company, once a bastion of French influence, was nationalized, a bold move that signaled a shift in power dynamics. This was not an isolated incident. 
Across the country, many foreign companies that had once thrived during the Ottoman Empire found themselves under the Turkish government's control. This wave of nationalization was a clear statement. Turkey was reclaiming its economic autonomy, asserting its independence from foreign control. The Vagan Lee incident thus became a catalyst for change, a turning point in Turkey's journey towards self-determination. It served as a stark reminder of the power of collective action, of the strength that lies in unity. It showed that a nation, when united under a common cause, can effect monumental changes that reverberate through history. And so, the legacy of the Vagan Lee incident lives on, a testament to the enduring spirit of the Turkish people. It serves as a poignant reminder of the power of a nation's voice in shaping its destiny. The Vagon Lee Incident, a testament to the power of a nation's voice, forever etched in the annals of history.